Hi, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and today is a jammy day, which means I've got my pyjamas on, I'm lounging around the house, I haven't put my contacts in, I've put my glasses on, they match my pyjama top, so... Yeah, so I am not um, looking my normal self. So anyway, um, I wanted to talk about the Windrush people going into hiding, um, but well, being forced into hiding. Um, I saw a article in The Guardian today, the 9th of January, and it was talking about how many Windrush claimants haven't actually claimed compensation for being um, wrongfully called illegal immigrants and being treated as illegal immigrants. And these same people have not um, applied for compensation, even though they've been unable to work, been unable to access health care, been unable to um, rent accommodation and things like that. What else have they been unable to do? Hmm, where did I put it? Benefits. Yeah, can't get benefits and they can't travel. So yeah, so there's um, apparently just over 1,000 people have actually applied for compensation out of approximately 15,000 who are eligible to apply. Now, what's been happening is, is that those who have attempted to apply have found out from people who have already applied how difficult it is to complete the forms. And apparently you need legal intervention because it's not that straightforward. Technically, if you're if you're quite literate, it shouldn't be that difficult because what it's all, what it's really asking you for is proof that you've been in the country. And if you were in the country and you were working, and you probably were if you was a Windrush, um, when if you came through the if you're a wind, member of the Windrush generation, it, you had to have been working at some point, and all they would need to know from my understanding, is that you worked and therefore you would have had a national health insurance number, you know, the YR, whatever the digits are with a number at the end, and you would have been paying taxes at some point. If you can prove that, I mean, that you have to have something that has that kind of information. And even if you don't, if you can remember where you lived at the time and um, the name you used to work, they should be able to find it for you. Anyway, the problem is a lot of people, they don't remember that stuff and they go from job to job and it's already on the form. They don't really have to write it out because it's normally on your P45. So you give your P45 to from one employer to the other. So unless you have a reason to memorise your national health insurance number, no, not your national health, your national insurance number, you're not going to really remember it. But that is what you would need in order to prove that you've been working. So I don't think it's as, well, I shouldn't say it's not as difficult as people make out. But that's the reason. And if you signed on to a GP when you were here years ago, that would prove that you was in the country during the period you said you were here. So I haven't seen the form. I don't know what else it would need. Because um, there's this lady, her name is Jacqueline McKenzie. She works pro bono, which is free, where she gets funding from somewhere. And she helps people from the Windrush complete forms. And But she's asking for funding so that other voluntary organisations can help other people complete forms. Because she said it's quite difficult and it's very complicated and she mentioned um, the need to write to doctors and HMRC to verify employment and residential history but 
in my knowledge, I don't think that that is difficult. And I'm wondering if it's being made difficult um, so that you do need legal intervention. No disrespect to um, the legal people who are helping, but it has to be a bit more complicated than just needing the um, that kind of information. Um I don't know if you would have remembered your your um, national insurance number. Most people do, funnily enough. I mean, I haven't used mine. I still remember mine from years years ago. And most people I ask, they remember that number. And that number is what's going to prove how long you've been in the country. So even if you just have your national insurance number and you worked, it's going to prove that you were in the country during that period of time. All the other documentation, I'm not quite sure how important it is. I mean, really what they need to do is verify that you were in the country before 1973. That's really what they need to do. And that is one way of verifying it. Anyway, a lot of um, Windrushians have kind of gone underground because they are so petrified that they're not going to have the right information. They're not even going to doctors because they don't want to be um, located or uh, brought, you know, brought out under the radar. You know, they don't have, you know, they're not having bank accounts, but a lot of them are legitimate legitimately here and their legal residents and just because they don't know how to complete the form and apparently some of them have been to Citizens Advice Bureau and found it unhelpful or not helpful enough even though the Citizens Advice Bureau are being paid to do that service but a lot of people aren't finding it helpful enough and I also understand that even if they go to the um Citizens Vice Bureau, they still need all this whole heap of documents. So um, it's, it's, it's hard. But I think if you think on the positive side, I, I mean, I don't know what kind of information you have. I don't want people who are entitled to compensation and who have been stopped from getting benefits, stopped from getting a job, who are knee high in debt because of it, being scared to actually apply for compensation. There has to be somebody out there who can help you. So um, what else did I want to say? Um, many don't have a British passport, like I said in a previous video. Not everybody goes on holiday and some people haven't been on vacation for 30 years because it's not our thing. We prefer to maybe get a house, we prefer maybe to get a car, we prefer maybe to buy and spend money on clothes, whatever it is, it, each to their own. But not everybody is going to get a passport to travel. Um, and I've already said about Jacqueline McKenzie. Um, yeah, I was just thinking how these people get by, I guess. Some of them might even risk driving without tax or insurance or they put their money into friends' bank accounts because they have to survive somehow. But, you know, what's sad is that the Home Office has actually lost passports. Now, when they send passports, they're supposed to send it recorded delivery. I don't understand how they claim they lose passports. One lady, they lost her, her, her Beijing passport, apparently. How can you lose a bloody passport? Mind you, somebody got a passport through my letterbox and it wasn't recorded delivery. So they're not even sending out passports by recorded delivery. So they're not even trackable. So if anything happens to them, I think that's, you know, such an important document. Why wouldn't you send that recorded delivery? I mean, you get enough bloody money. You charge enough for the bloody passport. So at least you can do is send it by recorded delivery to ensure the recipient receives it. But, oh, no, they send it by regular second, second class post. Anyway, like I said, so far £62,198 has been paid out and shared between 36 people. The expectation was that, you know, about £200 million would be paid out to all the people who have been unfairly um, designated as illegal immigrants. But that hasn't happened for the reasons I've stated. People are just scared 
they're afraid that they haven't got the documentation and they're afraid because they don't have the documentation they're going to be deported so they prefer to go underground and go into hiding it's so it's so sad and the thing is there's no kind of um, compassion for people who may not be able to understand these forms you know there's none whatsoever and everything you know more or less online and when you're talking about people who came here before 1973 you know a lot of them 60s 70s 80s what do they know about online I mean I know you've got a few that are you know who are with it but you still have the traditional the rigid mindsets who are kind of stuck into the age where they prefer to call they prefer to visit and, and you know these government agencies they haven't got time to talk to people anymore everything oh do it online do it online nobody's got time to talk to anybody so if somebody's got a problem there's no one to talk to and when they're left to try to put it online they're not going to bother so a lot of people it's a lot of the Windrush generation are going to lose out because they don't know how to complete the application forms because they're so complicated. Apparently, there's going to be some new immigration reforms that are going to make it easier. They're extending the deadline to two years for a further two years, apparently, and they're going to try to make it less complicated. But who knows? They don't think it's complicated in the first place, but you know they're not empathizing with people who are not computer literate oh dear what else is there yeah the government preys on Ill on illiteracy i think they expect people to be illiterate and then they make a mistake and then they say oh it's your fault so it is very difficult anyway this isn't a long one i just wanted to make sure i covered the main issues a lot of people like i said are in debt they're waiting for compensation to pay the debt but do not have the wherewithal to complete the forms because the process is so difficult so can you imagine that you've been stopped from working you now have all this debt you're borrowing from goodness knows who else and then um you're waiting for this compensation you can't get the compensation because you don't know how you can't complete the, fil the forms properly and the forms are the forms are so bloody long-winded. Technically, to prove that you're here, it's just your name, your address. You prove it by the HMRC where you were working, and your GP, or a dentist, or if you went to school. You know what I mean? That's all they should need. There shouldn't be anything more complicated than that. If they if they um, legitimately want to know if somebody was in the country that is how they would be able to tell you don't need a whole heap of documentation you don't need a lot of forms to fill up it's just obstructive and it's deliberately obstructive anyway that's all i've got to say i'll put the link um from the guardian in the i've got this thing that's um in in the um description and that's all for now bye bye